I'll be presenting and talking about uh, global regulatory updates in the chemical sector, what's happening across different countries, which regulations are there, and what's next in this line of regulatory compliance that we are facing today. Uh, briefly, I'll obviously give a short introduction about uh, our company. Uh, but on the left hand side, you can see that there is a list of around 10 to 11 regulations which I'll be covering in three aspects. The first one is regulatory briefing. What is that regulation and in summary, what does it contain? The key timelines that you need to take care of in terms of complying with those respective deadlines and then some compliance advices that what you should take care of while you are going after these regulations. So, GPC Group, uh, we were founded in 2008 uh, as a service-based company for helping primarily Indian SMEs to comply with the European REACH regulation, which was the primary first regulation enforced on the lines of technical barriers to trade in the world. Slowly after that regulation, it became a cascade effect or a snowball effect and lots of new REACH and REACH light regulations started coming up. Now, in short, we'll cover that later on as well. There are across the globe, I think almost 60% of the countries either have a REACH or REACH like regulation or they are in transition of developing that regulation or they are, they are into some planning stage. Right now, as of today, we have around eight offices across the globe uh, and we have two laboratory locations. One of the main important factors that we are really proud of today is that we have around 1500 odd clients spread across 38 different countries and with a client retention rate of 99% which shows the level of trust we maintain with our clients. And these, these figures, these numbers we are talking about on an average of 12 years. So these are not couple of years numbers. GPC has more than 100 professionals with extensive experience in their respective fields. Uh, education wise 25% of those are PhDs, I am one of them amongst you and uh, rest 75% have masters and postgraduate degrees. As I said, we cover through these eight offices and across our affiliate network. We have a global regulatory coverage. In short, I would like to say that, you know, we provide an end to end compliance solution for everything that you would need from day one when you start thinking of supply chain. We take care of all your compliance needs. So coming to global regulatory updates, this was the slide I was talking about that here you see the whole map, global map of green marked regions where the regulations have been implemented. The yellow marked regions are the places where the regulations are in transitional phase. For example, I mean all the Russian area, Eurasian area is marked as, uh, as yellow because Eurasia reach is under development and it would come into force sooner. The red marked areas are those where there is no legislation yet and there is no also planning to be done or it's, it's, uh, it's, it's neither in the transition state nor in, uh, nor in the discussion stage. Uh, here is the list of countries in short mentioning in development and low legislation. If you are placing your chemicals in any of the countries where they have implemented the regulation, uh, I guess you understand that you have to comply with these, uh, these regulations. But more important is to keep track of those which are into transitional phase because that's where the future business planning comes into role in order to decide uh, if these are the emerging markets and these are the technical barriers to trade that we have to go to, then how do we prepare now and what are the obligations? That's where our regulatory intelligence and research team comes into play. So starting with Europe, uh, pretty much regarding European reach, we understand that it has been one of the first ones, it has been implemented. Uh, the last deadlines were passed in 2018. Uh, anything that is being placed in new in the market needs to be registered, so on and so forth. Uh, but there are three important things which are ongoing right now. The first one is SCIP. This is the database for substances of concerns and articles as such or in complex products. So if you are an article manufacturer, you have to make sure and understand, do you have a substance which is of high concern in a certain concentration in your article which is being placed inside Europe. And if that is the case, then you need to comply with SCIP database requirements. That's where the SVHC assessment comes into role, wherein SCIP database ensures that the information or objects 
especially articles containing these chemicals which are being placed in the market are being well informed and we understand what's the composition of that article in terms of very high substance, uh, concerned substance uh, categorization. Uh, the other thing is poison center notification, which is basically when you have placed the chemical, if it has some hazardous effects and it can cause some hazardous effects and is there an accident that may be caused after that, then obviously the European authorities and the accident prevention authorities needs to be aware of everything that the chemical needs to be, uh, you know, managed in a way. So what poison center notification does is under Annex 8 to the CLP regulation, importers and downstream users, placing hazardous mixtures into the EU market are, are to provide specific information on the mixtures before placing these chemicals into the market. As of 1st January 2021, which recently, uh, which passed last year, if your mixtures are, consume, are for consumer or professional use, then you needed to you know, comply with that deadline. After that, 1st January 2024 is the deadline for mixtures, hazardous mixtures for industrial use. Uh, we can move down from Europe to UK and uh, when we talk about Europe to UK, obviously Brexit happened, uh, then UK REACH came into force, which is kind of a replica of EU REACH, but in their own different capacity instead of ECA, now HSE is taking care of these things in the Europe, in the UK. Uh, although they tried to take into consideration almost uh, uh, everything that REACH has done, but there were a couple of transitional provisions that were provided, for example, downstream user notification as well as NRES. So the first deadline uh, which was for transitional phase when you were placing a chemical in Europe uh, as part of EU REACH and it has been registered in Europe. For that the transition was DUIN, the deadline for which has been passed. And there is another provision which is called NRES which is new registration of an existing substance which means it has been placed in the European market but not UK and has been registered in EU and that's where you don't have to go through the complex process otherwise and go through the NRES process to register in the UK. Apart from that, what the deadlines that we are looking forward to now are pretty much identical to what we have seen in Euro, uh, EU reach. So the highest tonnage ban, obviously 28th October 2023, two years from the implementation time. 28th October 2025, the, then the second level of tonnage ban. Uh, and 28th October 2027 is the last tonnage ban. One of the most important things here is that if you have chemicals which are being placed in the UK, more than 1000 tons, then you need to start your process of registration right now so that if you don't have a legal entity, then companies like GPC can help you with that compliance process, so represent you in that process as well as, you know, start with your inquiry process, submission of the dossier, so on and so forth. I guess couple of points here I have already covered in my previous slide, but uh, one of the last things that, uh, uh, you know, which we emphasize always is that if you don't have a legal entity in any country, respective to where you are placing the market, then at least have a due diligence process to identify a right representative, uh, which can represent you in those countries uh, and not just those, but other countries as well. So this is something which is going to be standard for the rest of the slides as well. Uh, regarding Australia, again, uh, if you're doing business in Australia, uh, we have Australian Chemical Regulation, which is Australian Industrial Chemical Introduction Scheme, AICIS. It has been in, 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 enforced in, on 1st of July 2020. Earlier to that, there was NICNAS. Uh, under AICIS, chemical importers are responsible for self-determining the assessment category that best, best fits their chemicals, which means that you need to identify in what type of introduction, which means the definition of introduction is being placed in the market, what type of introduction category your chemical falls into. And after that, how AICIS divides it into different types of regulatory obligations. Once that is identified, then the respective compliance process needs to be done. There is obviously an industry list which was updated till 10th of February 2022, which is last last month, and it's published uh, in March 2022. There is also transition to GHS 7 from January 1st, 2023. Only GHS 7 in Australia should be used for classification and SDS and labeling purposes. 
here is a small flow chart and i guess it's very hard for me to also see yeah uh, because of the led screen yeah so this flow chart is basically your decision making process irrespective of any external compliance manager you hire or not so first you investigate if you need to register your chemical in this uh, australian market then you register your business in the australian market which is if you don't have a legal entity then you need to have one after that you categorize your chemical that in which introduction scheme it falls into thereafter if it is a listed introduction which means it is present in the inventory which is published by the authorities then uh, i'm not sure what is in there yeah if it is a listed introduction then you don't need to do compliance obligations which are more complex but if it is not listed then you need to submit annual declaration so for annual declaration there is a deadline uh, from 1st of august to 20 30th of november 2022 this is usually the every year deadline and uh, if you are placing chemicals this you need to do for doing so also you need to have a legal entity in australia so if you don't have one you can hire one like gpc and ask them to do this due diligence for you regarding turkey so we all know that uh, you know uh, after eu reach happened then korea reach happened which we also will talk about uh, turkey also implemented its version of reach which is an adaptation of eu reach to turkey called kkdik it has been enforced already last year uh, last to last year june 23rd uh the authority has now updated kk dik authority fees which has been done in january 2022 the right now status uh, for regulatory activity is that the lead registration appointment is ongoing it is being continued it was obviously after the uh, pre registration deadline passed it was being continued and the registration deadline for all substances under kk dik regardless of the tonnage band is December 31st 2023 so we're not talking about different types of tonnage bans here rather all sorts of tonnage bans needs to be registered within this two years timeline and from now if we look into it then it's less than one and a half year which you know goes by rather easily again like eu had no data no market policy uh, turkey has no compliance no market policy so these are again the deadlines uh, pre registration happened registration on uh, the first deadline is upcoming and the lr process is being performed the most important part here is that this lr process can take from 5 months to 2 years we are as of today representing more than 300 lr positions right now what is happening in turkey and uh, we we have gone through this process in past 8 months or so so if you are into turkish market placing chemicals in the turkish market and considering this process then please i it's it's a humble request that start now regarding turkey as we have talked that was the process part uh, if you are exporting chemicals to turkey then you need to see if your substance is pre registered or not if not then you cannot place your chemical in the market if yes then you don't have any major requirements as of now rather than the registration deadline which is end of 2023 obviously you can do late pre registration as well but if you have not done that until the first deadline which is 2023 then again no data no market after the uh, uh, pre registration is done uh, if your substance is registered before 31st of december 2023 then obviously you can continue to export to turkey but if it is not you have missed the deadline again no data no market and uh, uh, this is this is again a list of services more specific to what gpc can do but we can help you with an end to end compliance especially with the lr positioning especially with putting your interest across um, uh, the election as well as in the whole discussion process regarding kreech it was enforced in january 20 uh, january uh, 1st 20, 2019 new substances more than 1 ton uh, 1 ton per annum not in kecl which is the korean inventory Uh, they are uh, the and the existing substances over 1000 tons per annum as well as pc priority existing substances uh, require registration prior to placing in the korean market existing substances the deadline considering the more than 1000 uh, uh, tons per annum do not require immediate registration there is a transition phase 
uh, which is mentioned until 2023, January 16th, which is next year. These are again the respective deadlines as per the tonnage bends, uh, and these are rather uh, flexible or more generous deadlines compared to what, what we have seen in the past, but they are more close to EU reach. Uh, most importantly, deadline for MSDS for one to, uh, 100 to 1000 ton is January 16, 2023 and deadline for registration for the same tonnage band is 31st of December 2024. Now we have come to Taiwan uh, and the chemical regulation in Taiwan is not called REACH, it's not called something on the lines of REACH rather than it is called Taiwan Toxic Chemicals and Concerned Substances Control Act because it is concerning toxic chemicals as well as some concerned substances and not 100% every chemical that is being placed in the market. And that's where the reason regarding the current deadlines as well as what you are, you know, what you need to be obliged with in Taiwan comes into role. Uh, so the phase one registration is for 100 plus kg of existing chemical substances. If anything which is being placed in the market more than 100 plus, uh, you know, kgs, then within six months, you need to uh, do the registration. Priority existing chemicals, standard registration needs to be done deadline for the first batch of PEC, which are 106 chemicals. Needs to be done by 2024, irrespective of the volume. This is the key point. Again, the tonnage is not playing a key role. New chemical substances, if they are not listed, if they have never placed in the market, they need to be registered within the 90 days period of being placed in the market, importing and manufacturing. Again, like AICIS, we talked about Australia, there is annual reporting between 1st of April and 30th of September. So you start with PEC standard registration. There is a deadline in 2024. Again, uh, for a different uh, phase one registration number once that is received, there is another deadline in 31st December 2025. And thereafter, you're done with your compliance requirement as well as you start following up with the annual reporting period. From Taiwan, it's Vietnam. So in short, in Vietnam, uh, there is a decree, there is a law that is being undermade. Uh, last year, they have opened for the second time the inventory for submission, for which obviously we have submitted a lot of nominations. The next thing, next step in this process is that government is undergoing that process of finalization. Due to Corona, it is delayed. But in 2022 end, we are supposed to hear that they might start with the transition phase like the WTO notification transition phase for 2023. And in that period itself, they might open the inventory. The advantages of having your substance listed in inventory is basically you would have a rather easier compliance requirements or compliance processes downstream. So if you're placing any chemical in Vietnam, then whenever the next inventory submission is open, we can help you with that. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, from here onwards, there are a couple of slides on South America. Again, these are complex slides. I will not go too much in detail. Uh, the South American chemical regulations are emerging. Main countries, Chile, Argentina and Brazil, they are upcoming up with, they, they are one of the most fast pacing, uh, having the right progress in the right direction for the chemical regulation to be implemented. So when we talk about Chile, then they have... Uh, in, in August 2022, uh, risk assessment resolution, this is supposed to be published. After that, there are two major deadlines that are going to be coming up. So if you are placing chemicals in Chile, then the first deadline of notification would be in two years from now, which is 2024. That will be the basis of making an inventory in Chile. Right after that, there will be the second deadline of final notification two years after that, which is... Uh, 30th of August 2026 and thereafter we are expecting that uh, GHS for non-industrial uh, uh, mixtures may come into force before that GHS for industrial mixtures would come into force that's a standard process I would say which is squeezed, squeezed in uh, during the inventory and notification process. For Colombia uh, the decree 1630 this was promulgated last year this was one of the the most significant, you know, um, progress that Colombia has made. Uh, this regulates hazardous chemicals again on the lines of, let's say, Thailand, Laos, Malaysia, Philippines. 
they are going with the hazardous chemicals first. Manufacturers and importers dealing with 100 kg per annum volumes needs to comply with this. And the new instruments contain national inventory, chemical prioritization and risk evaluation, risk reduction and management programs, environmental and health monitoring. This, the, the, the deadlines that we see on the right table, these are not the deadlines as per the regulation. This is something which is being discussed and proposed on the gaps of six months, six months, three years and six months. So there will be inventory announcement, inventory guiding manual, notification followed by substance notification, which is more comprehensive again on the lines of Chile. For Brazil, right now, one of the most important things is the latest update is that an amendment was presented and an official reporter has been pointed out in the government authorities regarding the regulation. And even bigger achievement for Brazil is that it has been approved by the Environmental Commission. Now, like India, you know, uh, if we have approved something into, the, into one department, it goes for internal consultation and legal waiting to different departments. So the next step in this process is also the amendment, the approval from Environmental Commission has been done already. And the, now the regulation will, under the, will undergo the social security and family commissions analysis. So in short, this process is nothing but hopping of the regulation draft from one department to another one and but moving in the right direction. So hopefully this will also we'll hear some updates in near future soon. Now, uh, before we move on to other parts of the things, uh, by the way, just for your information, you know, uh, all the technical part has been summarized and now comes little interesting part, which is direct actionable, direct to be used by the audience, which you can play around and, you know, uh, understand your compliance requirements. So we talked about this, uh, this graph, right? Uh, this gives us an overview of implemented transitional draft stage, no legislation stage regulations. Now I would like to show you this graph, which is regulatory landscape that GPC covers. If you compare with the previous one, whether there is a regulation implemented or in transition state or discussion happening, all the green marked areas are covered by GPC. And here is the list of countries that we can help you with the chemical regulatory compliance landscape process, end to end compliance. And I've counted them. Obviously, there are around 38 countries. So we, we, we largely cover the globe for you uh, to help make this process come into a single umbrella. Uh, so that you don't have to worry about your compliance needs from one country to another. Rather, you can focus on your business and improving upon that technology or that chemical or the business expansion into different places by leaving these, these things to, uh, to companies like GPC. Uh, I would also like to introduce one of the initiatives that GPC has taken. And I would like, you know, I would, I would take 30 seconds or one minute of your time to give a background for this. So, GPC was founded in 2008 and before that we were pretty much an NGO working with different governmental bodies across different countries generating awareness about what are these regulations and what is the future of these regulations. From 2004 to 2007, GPC ran a project along with Indian government, European Union, uh, European Commission and Swedish authorities where uh, GPC is headquartered right now to generate awareness between 2007 to 2000, uh, 2004 to 2007 amongst the non-European uh, SMEs to make them understand what these technical barriers to trade kind of regulations can do for their business or to their business and how to prepare for that. We ran around 30 awareness events consisting of 3000 participants, majorly Indian companies to generate this awareness. When REACH regulation came into force, uh, I think the announcement was made in June sometime around 2007. And after that, people were aware that next year onwards our you know, business is being affected. Then around 600 companies uh, from the Indian landscape reached out to us saying that, hey, you have helped us understand uh, what is going on in Europe. Can you also help us provide this service as well? The point is that we were always focused on building awareness, sharing our knowledge, making people understand the larger picture and the regulations that can help you achieve that larger picture, ultimately, which boils down to human and environmental health. Another thing that GPC truly believes in is that 
our vision and our mission is and one of our core values is that we believe knowledge for becoming compliant and knowledge for becoming sustainable should not be bought basically you shouldn't be paying for such kind of knowledge and based on that ideology we always share knowledge free of cost being a consultant in this regulatory space now why i gave you this background is because this this uh, global regulatory intelligence portal gpc initiative is a perfect example of this ideology wherein you can go on this website gpcgateway.com it has regulatory intelligence and content related to 50 plus different countries across five continents 60 plus regulations 1000 plus regulatory briefings 100% free of cost you can just go there register consume all the information download it and use it at your pace when we talk about uh, you know these regulatory briefings what are these regulatory briefings they are well curated regulatory briefings of these all technical documents which are regulatory documents written in a legal language more than 100 pages and our regulatory research and intelligence team sits down reads these documents summarizes it for the audience or the people who are going to use them or taking action on them in less than 3 pages so that you can easily consume that information and get to know that what you need to do and why you need to do the next step in what way uh i guess i have a short introduction video here uh do we have time to play this it's around 3 minutes if audience allows it i'm pretty sure it's 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 going to be you know useful for you <laughs> so uh i've already talked about the uh, you know uh, what is this regulatory intelligence portal it can give you in depth regulatory knowledge latest regulatory updates and actionable summaries that we talked about uh you can directly go to gpcgateway.com once you are on the website this is how the portal looks you can register a free account it's like making a gmail account once you have done this process you basically unleash the full content that is available on this platform uh, to be consumed by you there is a feature called compliance advisor where you can put in your cas number specifically related to your chemical and it will give you the information what you need to do regarding this cas number in this particular country and it is open for seven different countries in chemical regulation across the globe this is one of the features of gpc in which you know we can provide some free information in addition to this there are events section wherein we have more than 100 plus events these are webinars and events conducted by gpc either directly through its partners uh, which you can access easily this is across seven sectors and all that information is going to be free for you once you have registered inside the bottom page you can see there are four sections into it the first section is about presentation slides you can download second section is about actionable summaries this is how they look they are two to three page summaries uh this also you can download and consume at your own pace and then there are uh, q and a's uh, which are also downloadable these q and a's are not just the q and a's answered during the session but everything if you have run that webinar in the past those q and a's are compiled along with the q and a's that our research team has compiled for you and this is how these documents look like you can feel free to download all this content once you are logged in if you have missed the webinars obviously you can you know log in go into your dashboard section for which webinars you have registered you can go inside that webinar again rewatch it at your own pace uh, the best thing for doing this is that whenever you get an email for registration of the webinar irrespective of you are not attending it you can always register and find this place uh, all the content here we have intentionally put these you know uh, maps there because you can see how the global regulatory landscape is changing again you can register for our newsletter these the, the, this information i would like to emphasize this is not any news this is well curated news news which is actionable for you so if we hear something from the regulatory authorities let's say from uk uh, our research team sits down on that information summarizes that in an actionable for you actionable way for you and then you can access that information here uh yeah there are other features as well which are more uh, more related to company if you want to request services or quotes then you can directly do it here you don't have to go outside the platform or go through the whole long life cycle of discussing that information with with an individual uh, if they are standard services so in short uh, 
it's a free account that you can register and uh, at least consume the information because you know the journey towards compliance excellence starts with awareness and this is a free platform that can give you that awareness at your fingertips uh, i guess i uh, yeah i have just two more slides left because obviously i mean we are in chemexpo india and we are talking about the chemical industry and the regulatory landscape in india and we don't talk about indian chemicals management and safety rules why i have kept this slide for the last is you know because this is one of the biggest things which is going to affect the chemical industry in india and abroad obviously uh, in the most comprehensive way rest everything which is going outside of india it's related to or is scoped across your business needs but this is something which is irrespective of your business needs and is going to affect you locally in india so like reach which is going around rest of the world india is going to come up with its own chemical regulation which is more you know uh, uh, it is it is more a compilation and couple of other older regulations are being subsumed into this including the acts so that we can have a uh, uh, comprehensive uh, chemical regulation it's called indian chemicals management and safety rules so what is this indian chemicals management and safety rules uh, it is the most recent indian chemical regulation addressing substances substances and mixtures substances and articles and intermediates obviously all at the same time what is the target activities again this is going to target manufacturers imported substances that are being placed in the indian market companies abroad can appoint an authorized representative which is an or representation of india like we have an or in the eu reach how to comply you can assure that uh, you know first you need to uh, assure that you have requested activities are being performed within the established deadline like any other regulation uh, you need to submit this information you need to you know comply with the process there is going to be notification registration and annual reporting now uh, this is very generic you might be wondering okay what's different in india reach compared to other regulations or indian cmsr per se one of the most and biggest differences is not every chemical is going to be regulated or being treated equally like that has happened in 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 reach because the indian landscape is different indian industry is different second thing is which is more logistical and which which is uh, you know pretty much the most important thing i'm going to say about india reach today is the deadlines that have been decided uh, are very short so the first deadline for notification as well as registration notification is required by all the chemicals being placed in the market more than ton obviously and registration for a list of priority chemicals or a list of uh, to be registered chemicals under schedule 2748 odd chemicals which needs to go for full registration again more than 1 ton per annum the deadline is 18 months and the regulation right now has not been notified to wto the moment it is notified to wto within 60 days it will come into force and from that day onwards your 18 month deadline starts considering the indian landscape around one year time will go in establishment of the infrastructure as well as the it system and submission systems so pretty much at the end you are landing up having 6 months in your hand doing the notification and registration of everything that you are placing in the market another important difference is that the notification requires substance identity details which was primarily not required during pre registration in eu reach so you need to be prepared to have those details much in advance according to the indian uh, regulation requirements to be able to be ready for submission within those 6 months period of time if you are representing any company which doesn't have a legal entity in india then it becomes even stringer requirement so in short you should set up your regulatory team right now or at least make them aware about this information so that they know what's happening i can tell you we have been uh, I, i will cover that part as well uh, the regulation in its current draft stage is not going to change much so that your preparatory information or activity that you are preparing with your team goes into vain so it doesn't harm to prepare right now irrespective of the regulation is you know notified to wto so you can prepare your regulatory team prepare an inventory of substances what you are placing in market what you are buying from outside of india identify the quantity placed in india 
initiate communication with your downstream users already because sooner or later this is going to happen update the sds accord in accordance with ghs version 8 uh, obviously stay updated with icmsr uh, perform an inter train, internal training across your departments not just regulatory department and then follow up on the substance list which is basically categorized into these three categories substances to be registered is schedule 2 restricted or prohibited substances schedule 6 and hazardous substances 10 11 and 12 there are different requirements based on the listed substances under these different schedules now one of the most important facts i mean in what confidence and capacity i'm talking about india reach and its impact as well as uh, what is going to happen next why it's important for you to prepare so on and so forth gpc is the only non-governmental organization probably not just in india but abroad as well who has been part of the technical committee responsible for drafting and finalizing this regulation and as part of that process in 2010 we were the organization who has submitted the first background research based on our experience from eu reach to the committee and since 2010 there has been continuous engagement of gpc experts as part of this technical committee to help shape this regulation in the best interest of all the stakeholders primarily keeping the environment and human health into account the 2022 part is not mentioned here three weeks ago we have submitted a 11 point descriptive information document not just regarding the updates and next steps but what can be improved in this regulation to the technical committee if you have attended you know my colleague's presentation in the morning that was the second presentation dr jaychandra nair he has covered this topic in in much more depth and we have realized that maybe these recordings will also go live so you can go back there or, or visit our website to understand the details of it the point is that since this regulation became the fourth draft which was more a mature draft we have been engaged in generating global awareness regarding what will be the impacts of this regulation and the sole purpose of that is if you will be aware in advance you will prepare most likely in advance and save your efforts downstream especially if you need a consultant it is the right time to start doing that assessment process either by yourself we can help you with in a step-by-step -step way how you can do it in-house that's complimentary on our part but we can also do it for you if if you require us to do that and the last thing is that if you wait until the last moment that when the regulation will become the reality then we will move forward you might not just find time to submit anything in those six months especially if you are dependent on anyone else so it's a it's a humble request that don't wait for the regulation to be notified or come into place or so on and so forth we have been engaged with this regulation since 2010 and we know it in and out how it is going to happen what is going to happen when it is going to happen probably and that's our best interest advice to everyone irrespective of you take any advice from external consultants or not uh, start educating yourself regarding icmsr today and start preparing you can easily prepare you know with your list of substances analyze them put them across different schedules and analyze your requirements especially the logistical part of things which you need internally to be done with that i would like to thank you all for your patience and uh, if you have any questions i would love to answer them sir you mentioned about draft and national chemical policy in which you gpc was uh, engaged okay that was initiated by the Ministry of Chemicals and Petrochemicals. Yes. Uh, can we? Uh, what is the present status of that? Uh, that uh, that encompasses the period between uh, 2011 to 18. Okay. Wh what is the present status of that? That is a very important uh, draft. Yes. Between. Uh, did you mention the timeline as well? Between. Huh? Pardon? Between what timeline you mentioned? 2011 to 2018. You have mentioned. Yes. 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 Okay. That is valid only for that period. Or what? What? what no. No. Need so the the last slide which I showed, uh -huh. you know. Ah. This 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 is only the slide of the timeline ah. when GPC was involved and what did we do to contribute to this regulation. Achha, achha. This is not the timeline for the draft of the Indian Chemical Regulation. Ah. Right now, the current state is with this whole development, the draft has been reached into draft five, fifth draft, ah. and 
to the best of our understanding there is no not going to be the sixth draft the changes and amendments that had been suggested by different stakeholders including us would be incorporated and we will know that how much has been incorporated or not in the final draft final version and the final version will go uh, to wto directly for notification within 16 days 60 days of completion of that notification period this regulation is going to be enforced in india with a one year transitional period can we study that draft on the which app say we have we have sorry said? can we study that draft on yes. which uh, website absolutely chemical and so, petroleum commerce ministry uh, if the draft is not made public yet ha uh ha -huh. okay okay uh, on on the website uh -huh. directly right but what you can do is i haven't mentioned it here i should have uh, there is a website called indian chemical regulation help desk uh -huh. right so if you go on that website you can read about not just this chemical regulation but across other regulations as well which is affecting indian chemical industry including bis including other things okay. so there you have the full description every chapter detailed analyzed obviously you can go on our website as well <laughs> where you can you know have the full summary and details Thank you. and uh, c17 is the stall uh, where we have placed our stall today uh, during this expo so if you have any questions you can also come to that stall and we can help you with i mean we have physical copies of the regulation actionable summary it's one page actionable summary you can you know learn pretty much everything about what is this regulation within 10 minutes reading that summary thank you yeah yeah in fact the chemical policy draft which is mentioned here the draft was released quite some time ago yes but it was not followed up for some reason it was i think it was dropped yes, then yes. the regulation aspect has come in yeah, yeah. so the draft is available uh, it should be available but it's of no use now because the government is not going ahead with that policy we don't have a draft chemical policy we don't have a chemical policy we only have what is the regulatory policy that True. they are uh, uh, talking about True. thank you for the uh, presentation and the great updates this is tushar mahale from lubrizol so you talked about the turkey regulations the turkey regulations so i just wanted to know more about the toxicology requirements in terms of the data submission so are they really similar with the eu reach or yes. do they have some differences no they they are pretty much similar as eu reach it's very close to eu reach uh, but the biggest obviously the only difference is everything needs to be turkish in turkish language the dossier needs to be compiled in the turkish language as well as it needs to be submitted and signed by a turkish authorized certified uh, you know a turkish uh, certified turkish author uh, apart from that there is no major difference if you have a dossier from eu reach for the same chemical that is being placed in the turkish market you can just bring it to us we can translate it adapt it to the kkdi ke requirements get it certified and submit it to the authorities thank you yes and thanks. the other question i have is so now with respect to the icmsr so we uh, in the drafts which were circulated there was no clarification still about the toxicology data requirements Absolutely. in terms of the tonnage wise requirements yeah. so do uh, in terms of the uh, uh, amendments which you have submitted so uh, have you um, uh, recommended that the data to be clarified in terms of what toxicology studies are needed for which volume banks true true and uh, i i very well understand and refer to the communication and, and the reference to this this question uh, i would love to take this off record but i think it's fine you know considering the indian landscape and indian bureaucratic system and the decision making cycle uh, we would prefer to have the regulation in place rather quickly rather than making it the most perfect regulation across the globe you know and then come up with changes and amendments and additions to it not amendments but additions to it to make it more comprehensive in details so that is in 100% my understanding without being affiliated to gpc <laughs> is an answer that uh, that's why there is no clarity right now in depth uh, which will subsequently the moment it is going to be notified that's the process within the one year period of transitional time that all these you know guidance documents like we call them they will come into place uh, with clarity on the toxicological sides as well sure thank you yeah the reason why i ask is that not from a, my perspective but from the indian ke chemical perspective industry perspective especially those who are small scale manufacturers or those who are mid scale manufacturers and don't have the regulatory team of their own and if they need to do some toxicology studies or uh, even 
file a dossier that period will not be really uh, sufficient for them if they don't have understanding in Absolutely. terms of what is needed and you have i mean kind of made my point again that this is the reason why we are trying to generate this awareness that uh, if your chemicals fall into that 748 chemicals list and you fall in the category like you described then you need to prepare now you need to analyze this information now but if you look lo we look at the flip side of it this is what we try to do with india in the indian system if a chemical has been registered and identified as hazardous or identified as a priority substance that needs to be registered why do we go about doing that whole analysis again in the indian system that was the primary reason because of which we said not every chemical will ultimately undergo registration but only these 748 which is a dynamic list and then there is a list of around 4500 odd priority chemicals which will be in you know real time being evaluated and from there the chemicals will be added to this uh, this registered list but at least not every chemical will go for registration but would be a nightmare for the indian industry so only those registered substances needs to be analyzed and if if uh, if a company has you know uh, hard times with such substances then that's the only bit which is being affected which can easily save themselves by some you know preparation in advance great thank you so much thanks a lot tushar Hello. Yes. I have a question about ICMCR. Uh, in uh, my name is Dhananjay. I am from yes. uh, Aditya Birla Group. Yes. Hi. Epoxy then. chemicals. Uh, as you said, only 740 chemicals are need to be registered. Uh, they are identifying in Schedule Two. Uh, but all other chemicals required to be notified, right? Yes. And notification itself requires lot of data. Yes. Uh, it's not a lot of data it's only substance fingerprinting basically substance sameness information and identification so that if it has not been categorized in any other way by the rest of the globe then at least that's the most basic information government needs to know what is the substance identity and that's the reason why we need that information in the notification stage so that if it doesn't require any further information then we don't need to submit it like eu reach everything goes for registration irrespective of Uh, what kind of categorization it falls in? Uh, but the set of data also ask for hazards. Uh, I saw slide from Dr. Nair's presentation. I believe uh, the no notification data also requires some hazard no uh, notification. So that hazard to be taken from GHS hazards or which hazards? is it uh, i'm, I'm so. not I'm, sure i'm, I'm not, not sure, sure maybe it's I, not notification maybe it's classification because at that time you will obviously submit the sds so it's it's basically the classification and uh, as i've also mentioned you know it is going to be according to ghs version 8 okay. so every chemical will undergo notification that is point 1 correct every chemical that is being placed in the indian market by anyone in more than one ton quantity has to go for notification and that would require these basic substance identity related information including obviously sds uh, uh, in addition to that if it is not going to be registered then also it needs to be annually reported in order to know what is being changed regarding this only notified chemical and if something significant has changed then it might move to registration so these are the only three things okay and uh, our our government was also uh, getting some data from industries to make their own chemical inventory so that chemical inventory uh, uh, like uh, we have regulations in us and china there is a chemical inventory of their own tsc inventory and ic uh, china icsc inventory yes yes so if the chemical is present uh, in that particular inventory then usually it is free from the any notification on or the registration so will that be any similar thing here in icsmr do you think so or how yes. it will be Uh, at present there is no confirmation on this but this discussion was running in parallel to uh, icmsr and the suggestion there was that why should we waste our time creating our own inventory as you said you know there has been inventories across the globe if you club in all those inventories together you might pretty much cover 98 to 99% of the market already and then there is categorization already done so this was proposed but i don't think so there is a significant progress on those lines but it's a right direction to take in and it might I, i'm not sure uh, but it might get 
you know that idea in itself might get subsumed into the implementation of this regulation uh, and and one last question hmm. is not about the indian chemical regulation or uh, so it is actually a, a off bit question okay <laughs> yeah question is uh, now i am working in chemical regulation uh, uh, in area previously i was in the pharma regulations yes. i i worked uh, for a considerable period of time in pharma regulations yes one thing one difference i always see in pharma and in ke chemicals uh, uh, suppose there is a chemical take any territory us china europe even in india plant suppose a particular chemical is registered by a particular company then why every other company need to register it again and again which is not the case in pharma in pharma only the lead registrant what we call here in pharma industry it is a it is a inventor actually so they had to register it they had to do all the studies but if the particular uh, uh, drug uh, the medicine yes yes the drug yes. actually active active active, 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 active yes. ingredient api yeah. Yeah. if it is approved even in india by cdsco then no other company need to do registration again other company can uh, quickly take uh, hello other companies can quickly take that and use in their medicine or their product so why in chemi this chemical industry every company has to do registration again and again again True. and again every True. new company why what could you see this as a reason yeah and i would like to first thank you about such an intellectual and you know brainstorming question because this is this is this is how uh, we have to question in order to Uh, change things in a way. Uh, I don't have a direct answer, but I would like to clarify it. You know, uh, if I if I think logically, how these two industries function, right? Uh, primary difference is consumption and exposure. We are talking about chemicals on one hand, which are only being exposed to humans or environment. On the other hand, it's consumption, right? Second thing is more on the structure of the process. There. it's more about inventing a new ingredient which is being patented there is a patent expiry life cycle thereafter it is open and then the regulatory obligations fall up before that before the patent expire you can't even sell that same ingredient right so once that has been proven considering the amount of clinical trials and studies that are gone into producing that if after the expiry of the patent every other generic company who is replicating that chemical would need to go with the clinical trial approach it would be a nightmare for the system according to me and i believe that is the primary reason uh, because of which it 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 runs separately whereas when we comes into the chemical sector proprietary information is more on the lines of how you are formulating how you are mixing how you are taking this product forward but not as a pure chemical itself which is being manufactured and again on the lines of you know amount of studies that needs to be done so on and so forth uh, it is it is much less compared to the pharma side of things and to even minimize that there is a section of lead registration and co registration and when you submit a member dossier it's a very minimalistic information that you need to go about so that you don't repeat more and more animal studies everything i believe you know the foundation of these regulations is environment and human health so considering those points i believe these are the major differences because of which these two fields run you know very differently i, I hope it's a it's a rather logical discussion yes, yes it is it is a logical uh, yeah. i got my answer actually okay. in a way okay. i got my answer okay, thank okay. you very much <laughs> yeah thanks this is also more to do with there was talk about uh, a globalized harmonized uh, uh, regulations Absolutely. for chemical industry but if you look at it eu reach is in a way a trade barrier yes. because one of the foundations of uh, eu reach is to help eu companies compete in the global yes. market yes. that was one of the main uh, fundamental uh, yes. aspect of reach so every country will try to have their own regulation to help their companies su be successful in in that country so even if the reach is same as we have india reach it's almost the same as eu reach why have it at all but no country will like to have it mm -hmm. 
they would like to have their own companies succeed in their markets so uh, absolutely uh, i hands down one agree. of the other points uh, yeah. in this absolutely hands down i mean they are for a reason categorized as technical barriers to trade uh, because european union cannot ask you to not do business in european union you know 